Hello, this next section on LTV will go through some examples. So we've covered all of the design steps and details, and these examples will hopefully help increase your understanding. So this is the first example, and it's taken from the Structural Elements Design Manual by Dre Cotton Bowman, and it's asking us to de determine the design buckling resistance of an unrestrained 686 times 254 times 170 UB segment in S276 steel with an effective length of 5 meters if the bending moment is constant along the segment and that the load is applied through the shear center. So for this question, we don't have a design moment to compare the design buckling resistance to, so we can rule out steps 1 and 10. First of all, we need to classify the section and determine LCR. I'm not going to go through all of the steps for the classification, but the answer you get is class 1. So that means that we need to use the classic modulus WPLY to work out the buckling resistance. And the flange thickness is 23.7mm, so that's between 16 and 40mm. So from the product standards, the yield strength is 265mm2. LCR is the distance between lateral restraints, and what was specified in the question is 5 meters. So we've got all of the values of WI, FY, and LCR, and we'll need to use those later. The next step then is to calculate MCR, and since the load is applied through the shear center, we can get rid of the ZG and C2 terms, and this is the equation that we need to use. So we need to determine the value of C1. And since the bending moment is constant along the segment, C1 will be equal to 1. So these are the other terms that we need in order to work out MCR. So we have already worked out L, the distance between points of lateral restraints, as 5 meters. Young's modulus and the shear modulus are given in the euro codes. And the second moment of area about the minor axis and the warping and torsional constants can be found in the product standards. So now that now I am, we can just substitute in the values and work out the critical moment. So taking care of the units, um, we get an answer of 2.18 by 10 to the power of 9 millimeters, or 2,180 meters. So that's MCR, and next we need to calculate lambda bar LT. So to work out lambda bar LT, we use the equation 656. So we have the values of WI and FY from the section classification. And we just worked out MCR, so we can substitute in the values. And lambda bar LT works out as 0.837. Next step then is to work out alpha LT. So we're dealing with a rolled section, so we can use the special case. So we need to look at table 6.5. And there is a note in the Eurocode that tells us that the UK National Annex has changed the values of this table. So instead we need to refer to the National Annex NA217 clause 6323 part 1 and our height over breadth ratio is 2.71. So we're going to be using buckling curve C. Now for buckling curve C, the corresponding value of alpha LT from table 6.3 is 0.49. Now we need to work out Psi LT. So we're dealing with a rolled section and we're using the special case. So this is the equation we need to use and the UK National Annex recommends that we use values of 0.75 and 0.4 for beta and lambda bar LT0 respectively. We already know, um, so we already have the values of the other terms, so substituting in the values Phi LT works out as 0.861. Um, the next step then is to work out Chi LT. Again, we're dealing with the special case and we need to use this expression. So we've already worked out Phi LT is 0.861 and lambda bar LT is 0.827. The UK National Annex recommends that we set beta equals 0.75. So putting in these values, Lambda bar, or sorry, chi LT works out as 0.747. That's less than 1. And less than 1 over lambda bar LT, which is 1.46. So it meets those conditions. And since we're dealing with a special case, we can gain a bit of extra resistance by using chi LT mod. We get that dividing chi LT by F. And here's the equation to work out F. So we know that lambda bar LT is equal to 0.827. We need to work out KC, 
so we need to look at table 6.6. .6. And for a constant moment distribution, Kc is equal to 1. So substituting in those values, f is equal to 1. So in the cases where the moment is constant, you will not gain any extra resistance, since f, f will always be equal to 1 then. So, as I said, f is equal to 1, so chi LT mod will be the same as chi LT, so it's 0 0.747. So we're nearly at the end of this example, and the last thing we need to do is to work out the design buckling resistance. So here is expression 655, and um, we have the reduction factor chi LT in the 0.747 and the section modulus, and we know that we're using the classic section modulus because our section is class 1. The yield strength is determined as 265 newtons per millimeter squared from the product standards, and the partial factor gamma M1 is equal to 1. Putting in those values, MBRD works out as 1114 km. Now rather than carrying out that long, hand calc that long calculation by hand, we could have saved time and referred to the interactive blue book. So our section is a 686 times 254 times 170 UB, and we know that C1 is equal to 1 because the moment is constant. For a length of 5 meters, the buckling resistance, according to the blue book, is 1,110 kN. Now compare that to the result of the hand calculation, where we got 1,114 kN, and they are very similar. So this is the second example I'll go through, and it's an example from the XSD website. And what we have is a simply supported, laterally unrestrained beam. And rather than go through the whole calculation, I'm only going to refer to the sections related to LTB. So here is a diagram of the beam. We have the lateral restraint at the ends, and a UDL is applied along the whole length of the beam. So here are the partial factors and some uh, basic data about the beam. Um, we're dealing with a 356 times 171 times 51 UB in grade F275C, and there are just some of the section properties, and some more section properties. And then the permanent and variable loads here are calculated at the bottom. So once the permanent and variable loads are worked out, the maximum bending moment can be worked out. In this case, the maximum design bending moment is 90.61 kN, and that occurs at the mid-span. Um, so we need to check whether our design buckling resistance is greater than that value. So here, they're finding out the yield strength. They're referring to table 3.1 neuro codes, so they're getting a value of 275 newtons per millimeter squared. But remember, for design in the UK, we refer to the product standards. But in this case, we would also get a value of 275 newtons per millimeter squared. Next, they're going to classify the section, so they're referring to table 5.2, and um, the section is class 1 overall. The next section is about working out the critical moment, and if you look at the right hand column, you can see that they're referring to SN003. So the Young's modulus, shear modulus, and the length are listed. And K and KW are set to equal to 1. ZG is the distance from the loading point to the shear centre. On this example, um, the load is destabilizing, so ZG is positive, and the distance is half the height of the beam. And then C1 and C2 are 1.127 and 0.454 respectively. So here's table 3.2 from SN003, and it shows we've got those values C1 and C2. So for assembly supported beam with a UDL, C1 is 1.127 and C2 is 0.454. Now substituting in the values, we get a critical moment of 124.6 kN. Now the critical moment MCR has been worked out, then we can work out lambda bar LT. So that's equal to 1.406. Next, um, we need to work out the reduction factor. And this example is using a rolled section, and it's also using the special case. And we have these extra terms, beta and lambda bar LT naught. So before we can work out the reduction factor, we need to work out um, psi LT. So sorry, psi Phi LT, and to work out Phi LT, we need to know alpha LT. Now, for a rolled section, 
whose height over breadth ratio is 2.07. We're going to be using buffering curve um, C, and that means that alpha LT is 0.49. And we need to get phi LT, and that works out as 1.488. And putting that into a equation for chi LT, we get 0.427. We can see, we can use the F factor because we're using a road section, so F works out as 0.992. So then chi LT mod works out as 0 0.430. So that offers slightly more resistance than chi LT. So working out the design buckling resistance using the modified chi LT value, we get a design buckling resistance of 105.95 kN, and that's greater than our design moment of 19.61 kN. Therefore, the section is okay at resisting LTB. So now I'm going to take, um, I'm going to go through the same LTB scenarios using Master J software. So I'm going to be using Master Key for steel design, and this is the default screen that comes up. So the first thing that I will do is select Eurocode 3 design code option. Um, we're looking to analyze sections against LTB, so we need to select LT lateral torsional buckling from the elements design menu, menu. And this is the default screen that appears when you select the lateral torsional buckling option. So we can choose any section that we want using the drop down boxes. So here I've chosen a 406 times 178 times 60 UB in grade S275. Under the lateral torsional buckling tab, we can change the length, the maximum moment, and the maximum shear force. We can also change the values of the C1 and C2 coefficients, and the distance between the point of load application and the shear center Z2. So we can change all of those things. Now for this section that we have chosen, the results screen is blue, and we have this large view notice at the top of the screen, so we know that the section we've chosen is not adequate. One of the main advantages of using um, software is that it allows us to easily change this action, and we can see the updated results immediately. So here in Master Series, there is an option to auto size the member, and once we select that, the screen turns back to white, so we know that this action is suitable. The 406 times 178 times 60 UB in grade S275 still didn't work. Instead, Master Series has selected a 457 times 191 times 161 UB in S275 scale, which is suitable. So that's definitely an advantage of using software, especially for checking, checking LTV, since the calculations can be quite long. So this is just showing you that screen there, showing the auto size option. And that concludes this uh, lecture on unrestrained beams and in particular lateral torsional buckling. And remember that you can always refer back to this A lecture or you can use the complimentary handout as a quick reference because it contains all of the key points. Thank you.